we have Harry Moreno. He's going to talk about how one would identify sick cannabis plants using machine learning. Is your mic good? Hello. Hey. Keep it close. My name's Harry. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> so, hi. Hope you're, hope you're enjoying DEF CON. Um, and so we'll begin. Uh, this is uh, machine learning for uh, sick cannabis. How would you build a model to identify sick cannabis? Um, I designed this with, with the intention of pe being very practical. So folks could uh, take a photo of any sort of cannabis plant at a average distance uh, from, your, from your smartphone. So, uh, who am I? I'm a software engineer. I don't, I'm not a da data scientist, that's not my job title, I'm actually a software engineer. Um, but I'm interested in data science and, and machine learning, and I thought this would be a pretty interesting problem, very practical problem to solve. Uh, I'm from New York, I'm an organizer at Kaggle New York City. Kaggle, for those who don't know, is a data science platform where people compete from around the world to be the best data scientist on interesting data sets. So if you're in New York and want to do hands-on machine learning, uh, please join us. Uh, what's the background here? So some context on what's possible, what, what's being done with AI in 2018. Um, Artificial intelligence is becoming more pervasive and accessible. Two examples, a radiologists and uh, uh, interpreting x-rays, the, the state of the art is that it, we've built models that are as good or better than professional radiologists um, in terms of accuracy, as well as, I think, last year, a Stanford, Stanford University uh, published a, a model for skin cancer, um, diagnosing skin cancer that could run on a smartphone. So that's what's possible. And so what, what are we trying to do? We are trying to see if we can build something similar, but for diagnosing cannabis. Um, the intended users are hobbyists, people that don't, aren't doctors, aren't um, plant doctors, and they just want to grow a plant. Um, industrial players, so if you have uh, a cannabis farm, you're very keen on knowing if, you're, if your crops are sick. And the other problem, too, is that diagnosing a plant is a requires a domain expert. So, for example, I'm not a domain expert so in, in diagnosing plants, so I would want a model like this to, to help me. And so that's our goal. We want software that tells you if cannabis is sick by using your phone. Um, so how do we make this, how do we make a model? How do we make a predictive model? The machine learning process is this, you gather data, you train on examples, you build a predictive model on the examples. We, we launch it, we publicize it so that people can use it, and then we iterate. So one of the things that we can do once we've deployed it is that as people use it, as people upload photos uh, to get their, their predictions, that, that grows our data set. Um, and the goal is to make a very, very accurate, free, predictive model. So first step one, gathering data. We, myself and, and some other people in the community, um, helped, helped, uh, helped scrape uh, for sick cannabis, pictures of sick cannabis. And there are websites that, that do this. They're, that you upload your, your pictures of your sick plant and other people tell you what might be wrong, like if it's purple or if it's yellow, 
it means different things, and to solve them, they have different solutions. So we built a scraper to collect sick cannabis photos. Similarly, we collected healthy cannabis photos. This was a little bit easier because um, people like to show off their, their healthy plants and, and how well they're doing. So that was easier. Um, here we collected data for a, a data set that would trick the plant. So if our goal is to build a a model that can tell you if a plant is a cannabis plant is sick or, or if it's healthy. Another, a very practical concern is if I upload a photo, can can the model tell me if there's even cannabis in the photo? So I added this third class that uh, was basically composed of meme photos, uh, the Caltech object data set with random everyday objects, and a lot of pictures of flowers and plants to see if the model could learn to what what if the model could learn how to identify what is a cannabis plant first and then if it's sick or healthy so this is sort of the design of the of the of the training um, built this other images data set um, so after, at the end of GAP, this stage of gathering the data, we ended up with 3,000 images. 1,000 sick, 1,000 healthy, 1,000 other. This is actually a, a very, very tiny data set in terms of for doing this machine learning stuff. And we'll see that it, how it performs. If you want to follow along, what I pretty much did was I read section 5.3 in Deep Learning with Python. Uh, here they go over uh, data augmentation, which helps with um, mutating your, da your data set so that you, you can uh, get more mileage out of it, as well as, tra as, well as transfer learning, which allows you to be uh, begin building your model based off of like the cutting edge research that other people have published, pu publicized. Um, so for practical concerns, um, I work off of a, of a fairly old MacBook, and it has a GPU, but it's just very, very old. So I used Amazon Web Services, their SageMaker offering, which is a one-click deploy to a GPU instance, and you get all of the libraries installed. The one GPU instance is $1.50 an hour. The four GPU is $10 an hour. Um, so if you want to do this and you don't have a GPU, this is how you could do it. Uh, the specific technique that, we, that I used here was transfer learning, which basically we take the ImageNet winner. So ImageNet was another problem that was very, very um, popular. And now it's considered a solved problem, which was, which was the, the challenge was um, object recognition. So that challenge was you're given tons of data and there's 1,000 classes and your model has to say what's in the photo. This is actually considered a solved problem now. And there are plenty of pre-trained models that you can build your own models off of and that's what this transfer learning um, technique is. We basically take the so the full, imagine the, the, from, from top to bottom is the ImageNet uh, solution. You would take that, remove the top layer, and put in your own, and that's what you're training. So these lower layers are reusable um, feature detectors that you can use. And so what are some of the results? They're, we tried two, two architectures broadly. Uh, there's this ResNet 50, Re ResNet is short for residual network. I don't want to get into the details, but I, I tried this one first because this is the, the one that reached human level accuracy on the ImageNet co competition. And the accuracy that uh, we got um, when building our model was about 60% validation accuracy. 
And then I tried another model, another architecture called VGG16. And this is uh, coming out of Oxford. And this one achieved 80% accuracy. And this is pretty much what I ended up deploying, this second architecture. Um, there, it's, I want to figure out why this is the case. Um, everything online tells me that ResNet should have been more accurate, but it seems like we just need more data. So if we had something like 20,000 or 50,000 images, I would like to reach, uh, try this again with ResNet and see if that could get up to 95, 99% accuracy. But uh, for now, with, with 3,000 images, we have uh, VGG16. Um, and then we deployed it to the cloud. This is running on, uh, on EC2. There's no GPU uh, in production. It takes about one second for, for inference to happen, for the prediction to, to, for you to get a prediction. And it's built with, with Python tools like Keras, uh, Flask, and, and that's about it. We built a user interface, and you can check this out right now, chronicsickness.com. And I, if there's enough time, I'll demo it. But it's there, it's live. Pretty much you upload a, a file from your phone or from your browser, from your uh, computer, and you submit it, and you get a probability of what the model thinks is the outcome. So for this example picture, it's 88%. It adds, so it all adds up to one, the three cla uh, ca classes. So it would predict that that picture is of healthy cannabis. And I encourage you to test it out, help us make it better. Um, we want to iterate, so this is just the first, first step. 80% isn't that great. I feel like this, this if we're putting radiologists and, and dermatologists out of work, um, this, this, I think, in my opinion, would be a, a simpler problem. So it's, it's really just about getting more data uh, 3,000 images is way, way too small. Um, we want to, it's already open source. We want to, if, the, the, the key problem though is getting good labeled data. And that's very time intensive, requires a, an expert. So we want to now build some sort of crowdsourcing platform where people can contribute when they have uh, free time or as their interests uh, brings them in, and as they lose interest, they can, they, can, they can leave, but we want to preserve that sort of work uh, in a crowdsource sort of way, so look out for that. Future work. Um, so the problem of diagnosing sick plants is a three-class problem. Um, not as, it's, 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 it's hard to say like what, what, what should be more difficult or, what, or less difficult. But for example, ImageNet was a 1,000 class challenge. Um, and statistically, if you just made a random guess, it'd be pretty hard to get the right guess it, when there's lots of classes. So these other problems, um, if we could classify the exact disease of a plant, is much, dif much more difficult than just what we have now, which is sick or not sick or not cannabis. Um, and then it might be fun because there's lots of sites like this already uh, to try to predict the, the strain of the, the cannabis just for fun. And that is many, many, well, one, one source to, uh, told me that it was uh, about 800 strains. So that's arguable as well. Um, but it'd be pretty interesting to build something like this um, with no access to the, the plant's genetics. It's purely uh, its outward appearance um, and seeing what, what computers think, um, what sort of strains they discover. So. And that's my talk. It, the, the site's available at chroniccickness.com. And if you want to reach out to me, that's my site, harrymoreno.com. And if you want to help, if you have access to a large uh, data set of labeled cannabis photos, I really want to speak with you. Um, other than that, I, I want to build the crowdsourcing sort of platform. 
so that people can contribute and mm, let's let's make a, a a free predictive model for cannabis disease that's that's free for everybody that we could all build together and it, it benefits everybody so that's kind of what I want to build and that's it So, you want to take a I can take questions by by my clock. I have ten more minutes, but uh, if if people want to, um, yeah, I guess questions. Any questions? Yeah, so with the hat. Okay, so I think the question is, do, you, do we want to build something that um, is for ailments other than diseases? Like yeah. lack of water and... Yeah, yeah, like you need to use plants. Yeah, so actually when, so maybe I'm not an expert in cannabis, but when I said disease, I was actually going, I, I was actually including those sort of ailments because um, this breakdown of 40 plant diseases is actually from GrowEatEasy.com. And so we see things like boron deficiency, for example, light burn, which isn't a disease, but it's more of an issue that you'll have if you are just doing this in your closet or something. Um, so we could build both, but I think for, for proper diseases, it would, it would actually be more difficult and you would actually want to get some sort of botanist. I think from a more practical point of view, it'd be much easier to get, uh, collect data on those things that you, that you, that you did mention. So practical things like, uh, is it lacking water? It doesn't need more sunlight? And is it too close to the generator? That's one that I learned uh, in this project. So it's sort of like, it's sort of like the, so the software sort of meets you in the middle. Um, so if people want to build certain things or we have the, the, the talent, uh, we could certainly build a proper disease one, but I think it'd be most e just way easier to do the common ailments. So, in the back, the hat. So, the question is: Does the does the disease does the model? Yeah, chronic sickness that come, it does not do this. This is this is for future work. Um, it's we have a, a model that's about eighty percent accurate on just telling you if it th if it's sick or not, and that's first. First, we want to solve that problem. It, it should be, in my opinion, what I I think that it, we should be able to build a model that's above human level accuracy. Whatever we could debate about that, what that means exactly. But we should be able to build that for sick, not sick. And then once that's solved, we can tackle uh, more granular problems like the specific ailment and the, the strains, just for fun. Do you have uh, an API or a data? So we don't have an API yet. It's just the uh, chroniccickness.com where you can upload a photo and there's a link to the GitHub so you can see the code. Uh, but the model is not publicized. It's, it, the model itself is about 110 megabytes. Um, GitHub doesn't have support for large files, so it's not there. But we can, we can speak offline about that. If people want an API, um, we, could, we could build something like that. Oh, one more question. You may mention how you use the AWS SageMaker and the uh, GPU uh, situations. How long does training your model take um, when you go to do training model with a GPU without a GPU based on your 3,000 um, data? Yeah, so the GPU really helps with uh, the specific technique called data augmentation. And so you can do that for different types of data. So in machine learning problems, you might have audio data or text data. In this, in this problem, it's image data. And so it turns out that 
We can do random projections off that data, like right, rotating and skewing it um, and zooming in. All of that is drastically accelerated with a GPU. So in the book it says that if you don't have a GPU, don't even try to do data augmentation. And so, so there's that. And then the actual model training time with a GPU, for the, it's about an hour and a half for 3,000 images. And I think that would grow linearly. So, yeah, if we get if we get twenty thousand images, it it might be like six hour jobs. You that expect to scale a lot more with labels as you go, like you get to four diseases and strains and everything. And you're talking about. I think so. I think the model training is more in it. It grows linearly with your data set size, not so much with the problem, the number of classes you're trying to predict. So. And uh, so if you have any more questions, the, the site is chroniccickness.com. You can follow through to the GitHub and find my handle and you can send me emails if you want, if you want to help or if you have suggestions. Thank you.